Hi everyone. Coming to the last part of the waste disposal or waste treatment, we come to an important convention called Basel Convention, which was done in 1989. It was drafted and came into effect. It, and it was done in a place called Basel in Switzerland. This is the logo of a Basel Convention. Okay, now what was this about? See, when you have developing countries or developed, these developed countries had a lot of industries. So you can also call them as industrialized countries. So as these industries started increasing and spurting there was a spurt of industries and as these industries started increasing in large numbers there was a lot of hazardous waste that came out of the industries now what are hazardous waste anything that is dangerous say anything that is inflammable anything that is toxic Okay, anything that is infectious, anything that is explosive, all these come under the hazardous waste. So, what happened was they found it very difficult to dispose. So, they slowly started sending it away or selling it rather to developing countries. Okay, so this went to the developing countries or underdeveloped countries of Africa, Asia and so on. Okay, so there was a transboundary movement. So this Basel Convention is basically against transboundary movement of hazardous waste from industrialized developed countries to the developing countries. Now let's move on to the objectives of this Basel Convention. The first objective is to reduce the waste in terms of two things. See the waste can be bulky or the waste can be very little but it can be hazardous. So it is in terms of the quantity and hazardousness. The next one is, they usually transport, this transboundary movement usually used to be from one country to the other in, and it used to travel by ships to long distances. So what we can do is, this disposal should be as near as the generation of the waste. So the distance is very important. Then there should also be a reduction or a decrease in transboundary movement. So that means within internally they can try to dispose. They need not move it from one country to the other. Then they could also have new safer techniques or technologies wherein they could avoid this hazardous materials and most important of all they need a regulatory system to monitor all the transportation According to the Basel Convention, all the wastes can be carried. Say they want to transport, they have to have a written notification from the government of the country to which it is being exported. Okay? Of to which it is 
exported. Okay, that brings us to an end of the Basel Convention. Now we move on to another important topic that is importance of forest. So when we go to this importance of forest, we can start with the forest starts with the letter F. Okay, this is provides food, provides fuel, provides fiber. All these comes from the same word forest and it is, yeah, it is also, it also provides fertilizers which means the natural biomanure that we get, okay, so that is also there, fuel, fiber, food and fertilizers. So these are the important things that we get from forests. Okay, so these are forest products that we get. Besides this, what are the things that forest does? It prevents soil erosion. Okay, the next important thing is it provides oxygen. Today, as we hear about and we face and experience this coronavirus everywhere, there is so much of demand for oxygen and people pay thousands of rupees for oxygen. But here are these natural forests, these trees which provide us with oxygen. These forests or trees also act as carbon sink. What do you mean by carbon sink? Carbon sink means these trees will take in, you are in photosynthesis, they would take in carbon dioxide. So what happens? All the carbon dioxide that is emitted due to the population, due to the vehicles, due to transportation and all other things, industries, all this carbon dioxide to the maximum extent is absorbed by carbon uh, by the trees and that's called as carbon sink and in turn they would give us oxygen that's what the previous point tells us about then it also prevents siltation acts as a buffer, a buffer for natural disturbances. See, usually when there is a natural disturbance like tsunami or floods, this will act as a preventive boundary or a barrier for natural disturbances. And what are they? Like tsunamis, floods, etc. So these are the main important things of forest. So now we move on to the how to combat deforestation. How to combat, how to fight against this deforestation because it's a current problem now. So this can be done by community forestry. That's one thing. Social forestry. and agroforestry. These are the methods by which we can fight against it. So first let's move on to community forestry. What do you mean by a community? Instead of being alone, fighting it alone, we are involving the people around. That is called as community forestry. This improves the conservation of forests conservation improves and there is also an increase in the networking of people networking or communication of people they learn to 
two work together plus they enjoy the forest products so that decreases poverty this only is done by a movement called joint forest movement so this is in short known as jfm and it is joint forest movement what do you mean by this the word joint means that you have the land that belongs to the government this is given to the people who would be serving as caretakers sometimes there is also non governmental organizations ngos which join in so it's a pooling of all the three together that gives you joint forest movement now this is generally the outcome of this joint forest movement is all this that is the conservation improves networking improves they learn to work together and they enjoy the forest products so that decreases their poverty and also increases their welfare these are the consequences how does this happen how can they act so well that's because of three reasons they know the traditional methods of conservation which we may not know but they would know each the local people would know the traditional methods of conservation the second point being they have a wide knowledge of specific locations for example you go to this area it will be rich in these kind of trees and this is then they will have this much of rainfall and the climate would be like this so all that they would know about the specific location not only that they have a wide knowledge of different varieties of trees okay so this only makes them so successful so when we make use of them as caretakers we hit at success in all these areas so that's what this joint forest movement is about next we move on to social forestry what is social forestry usually if you see the waste land that belongs to government uncared government waste land which is along road sides railway lines etc now this is given to the local people trees are planted trees bushes plants so this is how this waste land is converted into a green land and this again improves like whatever trees they plant whatever crops they plant the yield goes to the local people so the local people are benefited by the forest products by the trees whatever not only that there is an increased rainfall okay and the green cover that is afforestation increases so these are all about the social forestry next we move on to agroforestry from the word agro it is planting trees agroforestry is nothing but planting trees 
along agro agricultural fields that is called as agroforestry now so if we start off here this is agroforestry there are three dimensions for this okay the first one is that it improves the agriculture see when you plant trees it's like tree breaks it will avoid soil erosion and also hold on or preserve the soil so agriculture is benefited then livestock is benefited because it provides fodder for the cattle and of course forestry trees are grown so forestry also improves so these are the three dimensions of agroforestry whether it's agroforestry or social forestry or joint forest movement as environmental students let us take a pledge to prevent and protect our forests okay with that we finish this chapter i am looking forward to see you in the next chapter i hope you enjoyed this chapter